go, we'll go over the details on that next week. Amen? Amen? So are you ready for God's word today? I know that was a lot. Earlier, this was malfunctioning, and, um, and I'm just having a little issue with it now. But oh, uh, we're going to get ready to get in the word, and um, I'm going I'm, to I'm really just want to bring you a message that goes right along with what Pastor Hyman brought and kind of what, what, this, is, what this is talking about is um, having a generous heart. Amen? This year, it's my priority to be more generous. Amen? I want to be more generous. I want our church to be more generous. You know, I want to raise my children to be more generous. You know, I, I, and let me tell you something. It all starts with the heart. Amen? Like, I, don't, I truly do not believe uh, that people have necessarily um, a giving problem. It's usually a heart problem. It's something that, um, because I, I, I believe that people want to give, right? Like, like, all of you, like, man, if I had the money, I'd give. You know, one, one guy uh, went up to the pastor and he says, Matt, pastor, if I had $1,000, I'd give it. He says, I'll take five right now if you got it. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> you got five? What? But I was going to go buy it. I was going to put gas. No. <laughs> so if you really want to give, you, you give, right? But I, I really believe it's a, it's a heart problem. It's not necessarily that, that, you're, that you're stingy or tight or anything like that. So... Uh, let, let's let's talk about that today because, um, again, I think, I, I believe with all my heart that this message today, it would change your life. It would change your marriage. I love hearing Mike and Nellie's testimony when they came. And they, were, they weren't like big givers. They'd give every now and then. But when they got the revelation of it, God just started doing things in their life. Amen. Pastor Hyman and, and Cynthia. You know, I mean, there's so many testimonies here that, I mean, me and, me and my wife, you know, we didn't have the rep. Man, it was, if it was a good day, you got $5. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you know? But, I mean, you know, when you learn that God uh, put it in our hearts, I mean, you know, again, I'll go through the message. I'm getting ahead of myself. But we were born stingy, but when you were born again, generous. Amen? So let, let, I want to just break this down because I really want to get to this point that, uh, that I want to show you about the heart. But Matthew chapter 7 Verses 1 and 2. We're going to put this up on the screen. Now, I want you to do something with me. I want you to read it with me, okay? Don't be afraid. Read it with me. You ready? Let's go. Judge not that you be ju not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Amen? So, let me just ask you, is there anything in this passage about money? None. Okay, let's go to Luke chapter 6, verse 37, and we're going to read again together. You ready? One, two, three. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. All right? So just on, those both, on the context of both of those scriptures, um, was there anything there about money? Um, what would you say the context of the scripture was? Judging, right? Judge not. You're not be judged. Condemn not. And can, so now what I want to do is I want to go to a scripture that's familiar to all of us that we usually use for giving. But I want to use it now. We're using it in the context that it was written. So go to, go to verse 30, 38. So give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your bosom. For whatever, the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So, is there anything in there about money? So, and when you look at the context of the scripture, it says that when you judge, it's going to be given back to you in the same measure. Now, let's quote the scripture we really like to quote, but we ain't going to like it now. Because the way you judge, it's going to be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over will men give judgment unto you. When you condemn, then it will give it, give it, give it. Condemnation will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. If you forgive, 
then it'll be same measured back to you. So, I mean, when I look at the content, why, why are you saying this, Pastor? Why are you bringing this out? Because it's a heart issue. It was never about money. It's about the heart. It's about the way, the way we give. Now, you could use that, that give and it, because you can use anything with it. You can use money as it. You, you can give money. You, in, you can give it, and it'll be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. But it wasn't about the money. It was about the heart. Jesus was trying to teach them about their heart. And the way that we give and the way that we judge and the way that we love and the way that we forgive, it's all about the heart. So it, it's, not about, it's not about, you know, necessarily the money because a lot of times people get a little, a little nervous when you start talking about giving. Do you know, look, do you know that we talk about giving every week when we preach? Do you know that we talk about giving every week? Look, if I, if I preach grace, I got to talk about giving because he, God so loved the world that he, I, if, I'm, if I'm giving you a message on marriage, I have to talk about giving because in a marriage, you need to be givers, not just takers. If I'm talking about salvation, I'm going to tell you, give your heart to Jesus. In the beginning of the year, we talked about fasting. We were ministering on fasting, right? What did I say? Give your body as a living sacrifice. It's all about giving. The gospel is all about giving. It's not. So if I'm talking about money, if I'm talking about this, it, it's, all, it's all the same. Amen? It's all the same. Well, you may be here and you may be saying, oh, no, with all they do, now that they just, those churches, those preachers, they just want my money. No. Let me just tell you. God wants your money, not the church. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. God is after your money because if he can give, you can give him your money, then you can, he can have your heart. But if he can't have your money, he can't have your heart. So yeah, the, the church ain't after your money, but God is. God, God's trying to show you because look, look, being a giver, it pushes out greediness and selfishness out of your heart. When you learn, when you learn to give, look. How many of you want a generous heart this year? I mean, I want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to have that attitude in, in my heart that every time that it's time to give that, you know, um, I'm like, mm, I got to go to the restroom. Be right back. <laughs> Text me when they're done. <laughs> Text me when they're done. <laughs> it's just whatever, look, whatever. And, and again, it goes back to like whatever measure you give is going to be given back to you. Whatever measure you bless, you know, it's, it's if, you know, I remember, y'all remember I told you the story about uh, like when, when my wife would cook and, and she would say, uh, hey, the food's, gonna, food's ready, come eat. And I'll go over there and I'll be like, it ain't ready. Don't call me unless it's ready. You know, I was dishonoring my wife, right? And then when I heard my sons do it, I was like, why are you doing that? Don't be doing that. Boy, don't talk to your mom. When she tells you, sit down, you sit down. But what was I doing? Whatever measure I was giving, I was receiving. If you sow dishonor, whatever measure of dishonor you sow, the same dishonor you get back. You know, if, if, you're, if you're coming for counseling because your you're, you're sons and daughters are, if, uh, if they're yelling and cussing at you, and, you, you know, and then you turn around and say, y'all better shut the blankety blank up. <laughs> whatever, whatever you... Whatever measure you sow cuss words, you're going to get it back. Whatever measure you yell, you're going to get yelling back. I mean, we had to learn. Like, we, we were, uh, just, just to confess, we were a yelling family. We, we, were, we were a yelling family. You know, we'd be like, you know, hey, that's just, hey, uh, go to the car. And then you take too long. Hey, why could you not in the car? And we, we would, we would kind of. You know, I told you hurry up to help me. How come you haven't cleaned your room? All right, I'm going to clean it. Every time, like, all right, all right. I mean, I'm going to clean it. You don't have to get mad. Why are you always mad? Why are you so rude? Whatever measure you sow, it'll be measured back to you. It's a matter, it's, it's, it's a heart condition, Amen. I'm telling you that if we, allow, if we allow God to really have our heart, you know, we won't have a problem being generous. 
You know, we don't have a problem with being, being nice. Amen? So Deuteronomy chapter 15, 7 through 9, this is what it says. If there is among you a poor man of your brethren within any of the gates in your land which the Lord your God is giving you, you should not harden your heart nor shut up your hand from the poor. But you shall open your hand wide to him and willingly lend him sufficient for his need, whatever he needs. It's saying if somebody's in need, you know, and he comes by, you should help him. You should, you should, you should give him anything that he don't harden your heart. Sometimes, you know, we harden our hearts to people. So if we're ever going to be generous, I got four points for you, and we're going to go through these things. The number one is deal with a selfish heart. Deal with a selfish heart. And, and you know, I had to deal with my selfish heart, but let, let, me, let me just go on. I don't want to get off track. Verse 9, it says, Beware lest there be a wicked thought in your heart. There are thoughts in your heart. There are good thoughts and there are bad thoughts. Beware lest there be a wicked thought in your heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is at hand, and your eye be evil against your poor brother, and give him nothing and he cry out to the Lord against you, and become, and it becomes sin amongst you, amongst you. So notice that, be, notice that being stingy or wicked, God calls it a selfish, a sel uh, He calls it a wicked and selfish uh, a thought. But let me just tell you in the context of the scripture. So the seventh year was the year of jubilee, and God had set up an economic system that after every seven years, all debts would be canceled. So. What this scripture is saying is that if somebody comes to you in the sixth year and, you know, he said, man, my crops are bad. I've been doing bad. I haven't been able to feed my family. Lend me some money. And then you start thinking, well, man, you know, the seventh year is coming up and then he doesn't have to pay me back and I'm going to have to forgive him. And, and, and you don't lend him money. The Lord said, don't do that. Don't let it be. Don't let it be about the money. He says, be good in your heart. Don't be wicked and, and, and think that. Don't be selfish and think that. He says, he says when you know something like that, it, it's, you know, there's time. The Bible says, lend without expecting anything in return. Lend without expecting. You know, a lot of times people get bent out of shape and people begin to, some people stop following Jesus because of that. You know? But that's what, that's what God is saying, you know. Uh, that, that don't, allow, don't allow those things, these worldly things and those fleshy things to get in between it don't, don't have a don't have a, 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 a selfish a selfish heart so uh, greed and selfish are not proper motives of giving we don't give out of greed we, we've read we've read the scripture we get up here and we tell you all the time we, we're not trying to force an offering out of you we're not trying to force you to tithe or anything like that we, we don't because God loves a cheerful giver give out of, give not grudgingly nor out of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver amen generous people are happy people how many of you believe that i mean th let me just ask you another question why do you think god created giving anybody have an idea i mean do you think um <laughs> this makes me laugh do you think he needs your money do you think that god standing at the welfare line getting to get cheese just because he ain't got no money you think the lights are going to get cut off in heaven do you think that he's running out of gold to pave the streets? I just want, I mean, does, is God not able to buy some new clothes? I mean, God did not implement giving for his sake. He implemented giving for our sake. He wanted to show us how to be generous. He wanted to show us the feeling, what it felt like to be a giver not a taker. I told you in the beginning, we were born selfish. We were born a sinful nature. But when you were born again, you were born again with a new nature. You were born again to, to love to give and to, to love. I mean, you know, most of us, we were so selfish before we got saved. There's no way we would ever be here. There's no way we would serve. There's no way we would, uh, that, that we would counsel people. Like, man, I ain't got time. i never forget, man, when we were younger, man, there was a, me and my brothers were hanging out under the tree, and we used to drink and stuff under there. And this poor guy came. <laughs> my brother's not here because he would remember. But uh, this poor guy came. He was crying. He was, like, going through stuff at his house. And, and he was like, man. And my brother said, look, man, we all got problems. We don't want to hear your problems. Go somewhere. What was that? That's the way we were in the world. 
We didn't care about your problems. We didn't care what you were going through. I got my own issues. But it's something that happens when you get born again. You have love. You have compassion. When somebody's hurting and broken, man, it's, it's your desire to, to embrace them and to tell them it's going to be all right. Amen? I mean, I, I thank God I'm not that old person anymore. Amen? I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, um, and, and that's one of, the, one of the things I want to tell you is that that's why I don't preach here, give to get. Give to get. I want you to give to give, not give to get. I came up in the ministry, and it's like, man, if you give to God, you're going to be driving a Cadillac. You're going to have a nice house. You're going to have, man, you're going to go on vacations. You see me, I go on vacation. And I always take selfies, and you know, everybody's looking at themselves like, man, he's blessed. He's blessed. He's blessed. And so you want to give to get, and it's the wrong. It's wrong. Now, l let me just tell you, uh, does God bless you? Absolutely, but it's a side benefit. It should never be our motive for giving. It should never. Could you imagine God up in heaven and thinking and saying, oh, look, yeah, my children, they're sure getting the revelation of getting. All it does is work more selfishness in our heart. It just works more selfishness. But when you say, I'm just going to give because I want to give. Whether, whether I get anything in return, I'm going to give, and I'm just going to sow it. I'm going to believe God. Lord, if this is what you're telling me to give, I'm going to give it. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so I, I don't want you to get that to where give to get. And that you're going to get blessed with a, you know, Rolex or something like that. <laughs> Amen? Um, now, I will say this. <laughs> I will say this for all the women, all the ladies. Say, hey. <laughs> okay. Okay. I know we're in Northside, so I had to throw that in there, you know. So, there is an area that we as men, that we never grow out of. There's an area of selfishness that we never grow out of. And that area is that we do not want to share our food with you. We do not, and we will not share our food with you. For some reason, every time... I know me and my wife, when we're over there ordering, and I order my meal because I'm hungry, and I say, what are you going to get? Oh, I'm just going to have some of yours. And I say, no, 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 you're not. She goes, I don't want to order a whole meal. I just want a bite. At the end of the day, she took half. She, there was a big bite. She took half of my meal. That is an area that, that I guess, you know, that men are just, you can call us greedy or whatever, but... We like to eat our whole plate. And all the men said, Amen. come on, somebody. I just helped somebody. I just saved you from an argument. Come on, somebody. I just saved you. So we're just, we're working it out. We're working it out. But um, uh, number two is deal with a grieving heart. Deal with the grieving heart. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 10, it says, you shall surely give to him, and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him. Because for this thing, the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand to. God says, don't be grieved when you, when you give. You know, because there's some times where we, we give something and we go away. We're like, oh, man, I shouldn't have gave that. Like, I really wanted to go to eat. I really wanted to buy this. I really wanted to, man, now I can't. Or, or how about this? How about when you give and the car breaks down? You'd be like, man, I knew I shouldn't have gave that money, man. I was, knew I shouldn't have gave it. That's grieving. That's gr I mean, how do you feel? How do you think God feels? Like if you gave, you're like, Lord, this is you, man. Oh, praise the Lord. The Lord told me to give this. And then you even came up, told the pastor, Pastor, the Lord told me to do this, man. Super now. I'm going to step out. I'm going to give that. And then all of a sudden, the car breaks down, and you're like, man, I don't even know if that was the Lord. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was, here, I was hearing things, but, you know, uh, uh, can you, like, scratch that off, that check? It, cut one of those zeros out. <laughs> you begin to regret that you gave. And, you know, deal with the grieving heart. When you give, give with all your heart. And you're like, you know what, Lord? You're going to take care of me from here on out. And I'm going to tell you, in, in 2021, in 2021, we gave our first fruits. But we had a vacation plan that we wanted to go to, me and my wife. And I, I think we were going camping. We were going, I think, to Florida. And I, I never forget that we gave. And we just sold it. And we were just like, 
we're just giving that. We just took a little bit of money. We weren't going to do everything that we wanted to do. We were just going to, we wanted a little budget. And, and I never forget, we were on I-10. We were in Louisiana over that, that, that swamp highway. And, uh, and then we get, a, we get a call. I get a call, and it was, it was another pastor. And he said, uh, hey, Pastor Juan, how's it going? I said, oh, I'm doing good, Pastor. How are you? He goes, he goes man, I'm doing good. The Lord, I was in prayer, and the Lord just put on my heart that uh, I just wanted to sow $750 into you. You know, I, just, I want to give it to you. How, how can I, what's the quickest way I can give it to you? Can I cash app you? Can I, I said, yeah, you can cash app me. <laughs> Come on down. And I was like on the phone, right? And then my wife was like, oh, she's like excited. She's like, we're going to go here now. I was like, hold on, girl, hold on. Because every time I get a little offering, right? If I get another offering, I'll be like, we got to save some. She goes, no, no, we already saved money. We don't need to save no more money. <laughs> so, you know, we, we splurged. We, none of it came back to Texas. I just want to tell you that. None of it came back to Texas. All, all that money went. And so, I mean, but it was just a way that God just shows up. It's just a way that when, when you don't grieve, when you give it with all your whole heart, you know, you, you, don't, you, don't, have to, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. You know, um, many people give because they feel like they have to and not because they want to. You don't have to give. We get to give. Amen? God wants to bless all that we do. You know, is God pleased after we give and we regret it? Did, did, did God accomplish the work in our heart that he wanted to? You know, I just... Um, I'm sorry, just had a little thought go, go through my head. And You ever had that? You just train a thought? I know I'm supposed to ignore it, but I just, I just thought, like, I'm going to the store afterwards today, and I, I forgot my money. I mean, I, I forgot my cash, so I was like, uh, I don't know why I was just thinking of that. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, thank you, my brother. Let's do a thing. Amen. I'm going to have to start sharing my thoughts a little more. Man, that's, I mean, I wasn't going to use that much, but praise the Lord. $120 here. <laughs> no, let me tell you, really, do you see how quick Mike got up and gave me that money? Do you know why he did that? Because I gave it to him before the service. <laughs> but you see how quick he got up? You know how, you know why? It was, he was so quick to give that because it belonged to me. See, the reason why we can't give is because we still think it belongs to us. But if you knew it belonged to God, if you knew it belonged to God, then you would be quick to give. I put it in his pocket and I, you know, you know. Who, what did God put in your pocket? What did God put in your bank account? What did God close you with this morning? What did God put you in? What, what wheels are you driving today? What house did he give you? Amen. I mean, you see, you, you wouldn't grieve. You wouldn't grieve over that. You wouldn't grieve over it when you know where it came from. Amen. Amen. That'll just make you just want to give right now. Come on, Lord, I'll give it all. <laughs> but I mean, you know, but it, it really, it puts things into perspective. It really does. It puts things in, for me, and look, I, I didn't, I'm not saying that I'm this, I was, been this best giver and all that. I've struggled with giving, and there's even days, these days that, that there's times where God says, give this, and I'm like, hold up, I don't, is that you, Lord? You know, but you know, when you make it a habit to be generous, Something happens to your heart where you just it, you come accustomed to to continue to be generous. Amen? Amen. See, we don't we don't like we don't give what is ours. We're not giving what is ours. All we're doing is returning what is his. Amen. Amen? Amen. That's all we're doing. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. How many of you believe that? So everything everything Amen. that we own belongs to Him. Uh, step number three: developing a generous heart. Developing a generous heart. So Deuteronomy 15, verses 14. You shall supply him liberally from your flock, from your threshing floor, and from your winepress. 
from what the Lord has blessed you with. You shall give to him. God said he wants us to just not, uh, not just to give enough, but to be generous, not selfish. Luke chapter 6 verse 30 he says, give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask of them back. Verse 31, he says, just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even the sinners love those who love them. Let, let me just tell you, when we're doing kingdom building, when we're doing kingdom stuff, a lot of times unbelievers, they, they won't give to a, king, a kingdom building. But if you're a believer and you care about the kingdom, I mean, you care about the gospel spreading, you're not going to have a problem with giving because it's your desire to spread the gospel. It's your desire to get people saved. It's your desire to see families restored. Amen? You know, um, and, and this is something that, you know, I'm just telling you as a Christian and as being mature, you know, our children, I got grandchildren. So what is something that uh, you don't have to teach your children to say when they're little? Huh? Mine. 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 Now, we hear kids, and, and I can have kids in my house, and especially my little grandson, Emery, if, if he's playing with something and a little, another little boy comes in and, and he plays with another toy, he's not even looking at it. He'll run over there and say, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. And then so that kid will leave that one, he'll go get another one, and, and Emery will run over there, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. We don't have to. Now, we see kids and we're like, you know, that's cute and all that stuff. We laugh. But there, there's still some adults like that. The Lord says, I want you to give that. That's mine. You know what God is saying? When are you going to grow up? When are you going to grow up and be like your father? When are you going to grow up and be like your elder brother, Jesus? They gave his first. They gave his best. When are you going to stop being afraid that I can't take care of you? When are you going to stop being afraid that I, that I'm not strong, that I, I don't have enough to provide for you? If I told you to give it, will I not take care of you? And that's what the Lord is telling us today. He's telling us it's time for us to grow up. Amen? Verse Luke 6.36, Therefore be merciful just as your Father is also merciful. He is kind to the unthankful and the evil. That's us. We go out there sometimes and we go to minister to homeless people and they don't care. They just want the food. They want whatever you got for them and they'll just turn away. I don't care. I don't, they ain't going to say thank you and nothing. You can go to the projects, and we could do the same thing, do an outreach, and are we going for a thanks? What are we going for? We're going to give. We're going because God told us to go. I want you to go. I want you to go. I want you to go. Whether anybody says thank you or not, we don't give to get. We're not giving because people are going to return something in our favor. We're giving out of the love of God in our hearts. Amen. 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 Uh, last, the last point, develop a grateful heart. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 15. You shall remember that you were slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you, therefore. Oh, he says, you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you. Say that with me. I command you this thing today. God commanded us to be generous. This is, it's, it's amazing that he said this. You shall remember that you were a slave. In Ephesians, it says that we were once alienated from God, that we once lived in darkness, that we didn't know God, that we didn't know God. We were dead in our trespasses. This is why he's telling them for, for you to be generous. He says, I command you this day. He says, you didn't have nothing. Now remember that, church. Where were you before you knew God? How lost were you? How, how many of us had lost our mind? How many of us didn't have our families? How many of us didn't have our children? When we think about, when we think about giving, we should think about how the Lord rescued us. I'm going to close with this story uh, because it really blessed me. And Pastor Robert Morris from Gateway Church, he's such a, you know, a great and radical giver. And um, uh, this, these messages that, that he preaches, they're out of the Blessed Life book. And um, I remember he said that, um, 
So at one time, he gave away like nine cars. They gave away their house that was paid off. He emptied out his savings account, his 401k. God told him to get rid of everything. He emptied everything out. And because God told him to give it away. Now they're, and now they're, they're very blessed and, you know, and it's amazing that the ministry they have. But he said one day they had some pastors over and he was talking to the pastor in the living room and his wife was talking to the pastor's wife. And the pastor's wife had asked his wife a question. She says, how did you feel when your husband said that he wanted to give your house away? And the lady said, she goes, because she had been asked it before, she says, I felt great. And the lady was like, really? She goes, he says, you have to understand, when me and my husband got married, he wasn't saved. So because God gave me my husband back, anything that he wants to do for God, anything that he wants to give away, if God took care of me then when I didn't even have my husband with me, then God's going to take care of me when we give everything away. Then the pastor, then the pastor asked her another question that she had never been asked before. He asked her, why do you think your husband is so generous? Why do you think that he just gives radically the way that he does? And she began to cry. And she said, Roberts still hasn't gotten over getting saved. He's so grateful that God saved him from drugs and from alcohol and gave him his family's back that he's he's never he's never gotten over being saved I think some of us we get over being saved and now we put on our we put on our our suits and our ties and we're dignified but if you remember getting saved like it was yesterday oh if you could, If you remember where he pulled you out, I know I was in 701 North San Jacinto, Houston, Texas, 77002, in 4C1. I remember 17 years old, weighed 117 pounds, soaking wet. Just had this young, met this young lady before I got locked up. She was pregnant. I didn't have any money. I didn't have no wife. I didn't have no child. I didn't even have no rights. I was owned by the state of Texas. So when I think about giving, I think about that cell. I think about where God saved me from. I think about I didn't have anything. So, Lord, what do you want me to give? I had nothing anyway. I came from nothing. See, when you come from nothing and God asks you for something, you'll be right back at nothing. But you got Jesus. Amen. Amen. When you look at life, when you look at life, look, I look, I haven't arrived and I haven't given away a house. We've given away cars before, but I've never given away a house. I, I want to I get to that place in my life. I want my life to be more generous. I want our church to be known. That's the church that, that helped me buy groceries. That's the church that helped turn my lights on. And, you know, this year we're going to be teaming up with another church, but we're going to go out and, and we're going to be hitting the streets for Jesus and, we're going to do things like that. We're going to, man, we're going to, we're going to create groups and we're going to collect money and we're going to go out and we're going to split the money up and we're going to go out and buy people groceries and we're going to buy people. We're going to just bless people. We're going to see random people. We're going to do things like that this year because I want us to learn to be more generous. I want our church to be more generous. And so today, I really hope that this message has blessed you. And today, I want you to stand with me and I want you to have your envelope. And I want the ushers to bring those baskets up here. And today, I, I, wanna, I want us to, can you move this mic too? When you get, Adam, can you help him move this? Got it. I just... I'll 
We want to encourage you today to follow us. Follow us on YouTube or Facebook. If you're on Facebook, like it, share it. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe to the button below so that you wouldn't miss any content that we have coming out. We have some exciting news here at Sydney on a Hill. God is doing amazing things. So we don't want you to miss anything. So if you hit that subscribe button, you will get notified every time we have new content coming out. God bless you. Thank you for watching.